Okay, let's start with this now. Linear equations in one variable. This is the first algebra concept that we want to practice now. Linear equations in one variable. So from this PDF, we have question number two, first of all. Okay. Alan drives an average of 100 miles each week. His car can travel an average of 25 miles per gallon of gasoline. He would like to reduce his weekly expenditure by $5, assuming gasoline costs $4 per gallon. Which equation can Alan use to determine how many fewer average miles he should drive each week? Okay, now how do we think about this? He drives 100 miles each week. And at the end, we want the number for each week. So we have 100 miles in total. Keep that in mind. His car can travel an average of 25 miles per gallon. Okay, so this is one conversion factor that we have. Let me just write that here. 25 miles per one hour, per, per one gallon. He wants to reduce the expenditure by $5. Okay. Assuming gasoline costs $4 per gallon, so we have $4 per one gallon. Which equation can he use to determine how many fewer average miles he should drive each week? Okay, now he wants to reduce it by $5. Now, what's the amount that he's spending right now? Can we find that out? 100 miles? We want to cancel out miles so we can say gallon per 25 miles. Miles and miles get canceled. And then we want to cancel out gallon from this. So that's $4 over one gallon. Gallon also gets canceled. And we're left with four into 100 divided by 25, that's $16. So currently he's spending $16, okay? For how many miles? For 100 miles. He wants to re reduce this number by $5. What does $5 correspond to? Let's say X miles. Can we find this ratio? 16 over five equals 100 over X, X equals 100 multiplied by 5 divided by 16 and that should give you 125 over 4 31.25 okay now we're not looking for the actual number let's just write it like this x equals 125 over 4. okay now what were we actually looking for how many fewer miles should he each week they're calling this m let's call this number m m miles so we, we have this equation okay 16 over 5 equals 100 over m which equation is equivalent to this let's think about this 16 m equals 500 if we keep 5 on the other side, we get 16m over 100 equals 5 and that's 4 over 25m equals 5. That should be D. He wants to reduce the expenditure by $5. So how many miles should he drive fewer as compared to before? So $5 ki corresponding he value fine. Wo hi utne hi reduce karna. Okay. Now this could be one idea. If you find this difficult, how to go from that equation to this. The other idea could be to find the value of M, which we found to be 31.25, right? Input them in the equation and see which one satisfies. The last one will satisfy. And that will be your that will be final answer. This was quite tricky. Uh, conversion factors really help in such problems. When you have three-way ratios, conversion factors are, ex are extremely helpful. 
so you see you had one ratio miles to gallon then dollars to gallon right if you understand conversion factors well that makes this much easier okay all right that was question number 2 then the next is question 3 from this the equation has no solution what's the value of k when does an equation have no solution when all the coefficients are the same just the constant term is different okay let's simplify the left hand side 3kx plus 39 equals 48 over 17x plus 36 now compare the two sides compare the two sides the constants are different but these terms have to be the same right because that will make these two equations parallel to each other and they would have no solution for that reason so that means 3k should equal 48 over 17 what's k 48 over 51 which simplifies to if you want to simplify you can write it like this as well and that's okay otherwise this is 16 over 17 constants no no it has no solution no solution means constants are going to be different you have to do that if it said there were infinite solution agar infinite solutions hote to fir constants bhi same hone the in no solutions case the constants have to be different you you not don't have to make make them the same is this all right okay let's move on the next one is four a certain product costs a company 65 dollars to make the product is sold by a sales person who earns a commission that is equal to 20 percent of the sales for the part okay what are we looking for at the end which of the following equation gives the number of units u the company sold to make a profit of 6840 okay we're looking for the number of units that give us a profit of 6840 how do you calculate profit from this product cost 65 dollars to make okay the commission is 20% of the sales price the profit is equal to the sales price minus the combined cost of making the product the commission if the sales price is 100 okay sales price is 100 they're selling it for 100 Minus the costs. What are the costs? Sixty-five dollar and twenty percent of the sales price, which would be twenty. This is the this is the profit that you're making from one product. If you're making U units, what will be the total profit? This multiplied by U. This should equal six eight four zero. Okay. now which equation does it does it correspond to this cannot be true because u is not multiplying by the whole thing what about the others now 20 plus 65 that's not correct you need to get 15 from here right 15 u aana chahiye aapke paas this is also not correct 35 into 0.2 that's going to give you 7u that's also not correct 80 minus 65 that's 15u this is going to be correct this is 15u equal to 6840 so it's a a is the final answer okay make sense okay next is 5 What's the problem in this one? What's the solution to this equation? Why is this difficult? Five t plus fifteen minus seventy minus twenty one equals thirty eight minus two t equals forty four and t equals minus twenty two. Is that what we get?
Is that okay? I don't know why someone selected this. Okay. Question five was this, and then you have question number seven. Okay, so that's the next one. Each side of a 30 sided polygon has one of three lengths. 30 sided polygon, so th there are 30 sides of this polygon, Zara. The number of sides with length eight centimeters is five times the number of sides and the length three centimeters. There are six sides with length four centimeters, which are must be true for the value of them. There are 30 sides in total. Okay. Six have length four centimeters. Six sides have length four centimeters. How many sides are we left with? 24 sides. Okay. The number of sides having a length of eight centimeters is five times the number of sides n with length three centimeters. So there are three different lengths. We know we have eliminated one of them, that's six. We have 24 left. Amongst these 24, if this is n, the rest are five times n. So n plus five n should equal 24 and n equals four from that. n plus five n, do you see that here? Okay, so the equations are different. Let me actually just do it the other way. What's the total number of sides? Because they have 30 on the right side, right? Let's add up all the sides. You have six sides here. Plus these n sides. Plus these sides that have eight centimeter length. How many are they? Five times n. So it's six plus n plus five n. That should equal 30. Does that make sense? And that should be B. That's six plus six n equals 30. All right. No problems? Sure. Let's move on. Yeah, it's the eighth I lost. Uh, linear equations in one variable. Next is linear equations in two variables. All right, linear equations in two variables. From this, we have question number two, first of all. For line H, the table shows three values of X and their corresponding values of Y. Line K is the result of translating line H down five units in the XY plane. What's the X intercept of line K? We have this one line given. Can we write down the equation of this line? What's the equation of this line? Y minus Y1 equals M into X minus X1, right? What's the equation of this line going to be? Find the gradient, 160 minus 130 divided by 23 minus 18. The gradient is 30 over five, that is six. So Y minus Y1, let's say that's 130 equals six into X minus 18. That's the equation that we have y equals 6x six, six minus 18 times 6 is 108, 108 plus 30, minus 108 plus 30, plus 135, 22, minus, minus 108 plus 130, that's 22. That's the equation. Okay. What's the x intercept of this line? Put y equal to 0 for x intercept x equals minus 22 over 6. That's the x intercept of this line. If you translate this line h units, no, this was line h in fact, okay, this is line h. If you translate this line 5 units down, this goes 5 units down, what happens to the x intercept? We should actually first translate it and then do it. This is line H, 6x plus 22. This is line H. What is line K going to be? What's line K? Translate it, five units down, 
What is the equation going to be? The whole equation goes five units down. Six x plus twenty two minus five. That's six x plus seventeen. That's line K. Find the x-intercept of this equation. That zero equals six x plus seventeen. And x equals minus 17 over 6. That's the x-intercept of this line that you were looking for. That is going to be D. Okay? Yes, Zara. We have this line. If it goes 5 units down, it becomes this x intercept is not, is not the same. Okay. You clear it? All right. Next is question four from this. In the equation above, A and B are constants and A is between zero and B. Which of the following could represent the graph of the equation in the xy plane? Okay, now that looks kind of tricky. Let's convert it to standard form. That will make it easier to understand. Y is equal to minus AX plus B. BY equals this, right? If you make Y the subject, this is what you get. Divide B on the other side, minus A over B plus B over B. That's just one. This is the, for, the equation in y equals mx plus c form. What's the gradient? This. What's the y-intercept? This. So y-intercept has to be 1. Let's look at the options. Y-intercept should be 1. So this is not possible. The other three are possible. Okay. What about the gradient now? Gradient is positive. How do we know that a and b both are? No, sorry. It's, it's negative because a and b are both positive. So minus A over B should be negative. So gradient has to be negative. Now for all of these lines, the gradient is also negative. So we can't differentiate using that as well. Now what else do we know? A is less than B. A is less than B. Let's think of some numbers that will make it easier to understand. Let's say if A was 2, B is 3. Okay. Then the gradient might be minus... 2 over 3. Okay? Minus 2 over 3. What does that mean? If x increases by 1 unit, what happens to y? y goes down by minus 2 over 3 minus, so 0.67 units it goes down. So change in x has to be more as compared to change in y. Right? Look at the first equation. For a first graph, one unit right, one unit down. That's not possible. Okay? That's minus one gradient. So A is not possible. It's going almost four units right and two units down. More change in X, less change in Y. That is possible. Let's look at the last one as well. One and two. That's not possible. That's less change in X, more change in Y. This is not correct. This is correct. This is supposed to be C. X intercept kaise find karenge? But this is just a value that we have assumed, right? So we won't get the exact X intercept. How do we know if it's 1 or 2 or this? We just input random value there. Gradients and yeto pala chal sakta hai ke minus one se bada hai, minus one se chota hai. That's all that we can figure out. X intercept hum kwe number ni nagal sakta hai. Okay? So ye karne ka se fayda ye hai, ke aapko pata chal gaya, one se compare karke, ke x axis pe agar one unit change karte hai, to y axis pe usse kam change hai, usse zada change hai. That's all that we can figure out from here. Abhi exact two over three to nahi hai, of course. This is just to understand that this is supposed to be change in x is supposed to be greater and change in y is supposed to be smaller. That's all that we can figure out from here. Numbers to assume kiya. 
Okay. Is that okay? Question four. Next is question nine from this PDF. Okay. In the given pair of equations, A and B are constants. The graph of this pair of equations in the xy plane is a pair of perpendicular lines. Which of the following pairs of equations also represents a pair of perpendicular lines? Now, this is kind of not necessary, but we can use that. They have given us that this is a pair of perpendicular lines. This is a pair of perpendicular. In fact, we have to use that. I'm sorry, we have to use that uh, because we have A and B that's unknown. We can't figure it out directly. We have the equations given and they are perpendicular. The gradients are negative reciprocal of each other. Okay. What's the gradient of the first line? Minus 5 over 7, right? If you compare it with the standard form y equals mx plus c, y equals subject when angle, this becomes y equals minus 5x over 7 plus 1 over 7, right? Minus 5 over 7 is greater than the first line. What about the second one? Minus a over b. That means minus a over b equals minus 5 over 7. No, I'm sorry. Minus a over b multiplied by minus 5 over 7 should be equal to minus 1. And that gives us minus and minus from this side get cancelled. Uh, but you'll still have 1 minus remaining there. Let's keep it like this. Let's keep it like this. We know that this part is minus 1. Okay. Let's look at the other equations now. This gradient is minus 10 over 7. And this is 2b over a, right? Now, is their product also minus 1? Let's compare with that. We have a negative sign. We have one of them negative and the other is positive. So no, that's not possible, right? Here we have both negative and then the result was negative, okay? Here we have one negative, one positive, so result cannot be negative, okay? Is that okay? This is again minus 10 over 7 and the second one is minus 2b over a. Okay, let's compare with that. Left side is 5a over 7b. That's what we want. Do we get the same thing from here? We get 20b over 7a. That's not the same thing. Okay. Let's do this as well. Minus 7 over 10 into, I'm sorry, minus 10 over 7 multiplied by minus 2a over b. What does that give us? 20 over 7 times a over b. Give me one yada. Last one. Last one cannot be correct. Okay, so we have done something wrong. Minus 10 over 7, 2b over a. That is all right. Minus 10 over 7 and minus, okay, this should have been, b, of, b should have been minus a over 2b, right? And what does that give us? If we multiply these two, this is minus a over 2b and that is 5 over 7 a over b and that is what we had there as well, it should have been b. Is that okay? We did not e put it equal to 5 over 7, 2 and 10, they get cancelled, that gives us 5. We just simplified that. So that's the same thing as this. That means they should also be minus one. That should also be minus one. Okay, Can you think of a quicker way of doing this? Were you discussing any quicker way of doing this? No? Oh, 
okay so that's how we can do that question number nine all right okay question 10 to earn money for college every works two part-time jobs okay let's look at the graph number of hours at job b number of hours at job a okay she earns ten dollars per hour working at job a and twenty dollars per hour working at job b in one week she earned a total of s dollars the graph of above represents all possible combinations what's the value of s The graph above, above represents all possible combination of number of hours she could have worked at the two jobs to earn S dollars. In one week, she earned a total of S dollars. So the total is S dollars. This is eight, this is 16. Okay, actually for each possible combination, she is getting the same amount, it seems. 10 into 10, that's 100, plus 30, that's 138 into that, that should be at job B, she's getting 20 at job A. Okay, so S is the total amount that she's earning, and that total amount is S dollars. If you look at this extreme value, if she's spending all of that on job A, that's 16 hours, and per hour she's getting $20. So 20 into 16, what's that? 320. If she spent all of that time at job B, it was 10, sorry. If she spent all of that and that time on job B, that will be eight hours. And she gets ten dollars, she gets twenty dollars there. That's also 160. So for each possible combination that you have here, she would be getting somewhere around that amount. If we had this, for instance, five and six, yeah. So it's, it's going to be 160. So it does not matter how many hours she spend at job A or job B, the total that she's getting is $160. Is that okay? That was question 10 from this. Now the next one is 12. We have six minutes, 20 got on this. Question number 12. In the xy plane, line k is defined by x plus y equals 0. Line j is perpendicular to line k. The y intercept of line j is 0, 3, which is the following with an equation of line j. Okay, what's the gradient from this line? Minus 1. If the line, if the other line is perpendicular, that gradient should be plus 1. This is for line j. Which of the following is an equation of line j? We know the y intercept is 3. So that's y equals 1x plus 3. y is equal to x plus 3. You can say that is x minus y equal to minus 3. That's this last one. Okay. Fairly straightforward. 12. Now let's look at 13. How many liters of a 25% saline solution must be added to 3 liters of a 10% saline solution to obtain a 15% saline solution. What do we want at the end? We want a 15% saline solution. That means whatever is the final solution that we get, 15% of that should be solved. 
okay we know there are three liters of a 10% saline solution what's the total amount of salt that you get from that 10% of 3 you can say that 0 0.1 times 3 10% of 3 right you're adding to this you're adding to this some amount of a 25% saline solution let's call this number x you're adding x liters of a 25% saline solution what does that mean? 0.25 of x. When you add these two together, the result should be a 15% saline solution. 15% saline solution. What's the total amount of solution that we have now? The total amount of solution that we have now is x plus 3. We had 3 liters of 10% saline solution, x liters of the other solution, the total amount is now x plus 3. We want 15% of this to be saline, so we say 0.15 into x plus 3. That's an equation that we get, we can solve this to find the value of x. 0.3 plus 0.25x equals 0.15x plus 0.45. 0.1x equals 0.15 and x equals 15. So you would need to add 15 liters. Is this correct? Can somebody check the working as well? 0.45 minus that, 0 0.15, 0 0.15? No, this should be 1.5. We need to add 1.5 liters of this solution to get a 15% saline solution in total. Multiply kyun karte hai? Kisko? We want 3 liters of 10% saline solution. How much of this is salt? 10% of 3. 10 over 100 into 3. That's 0 0.1 times 3. That's what we're doing here. How much of this is salt? 25% of that number, that's 0.25x. What should be the total amount of salt? 15% of the total, so 15 over 100 into the total, that's x plus 3, so 0.15 into x plus 3. So this sum should equal this, and that gives it the value for x. Okay? This is a mixture problem that we did uh, when we did word problems as well, right? It was exactly, almost exactly the same question that we did there as well. It's a standard question. You'll see quite a few of them in, in uh, practice questions as well. Okay. Systems of linear equations. We're doing difficult questions from this PDF now. So the, uh, you've asked about question number two from this. So let's start with this one. It says, in the given system of equations, P is a constant. If the system has no solution, what's the value of P? No solution means x and y terms should be the same and constant should be different. And right? that's what it means. So let's rearrange both equations and bring x and y terms to one side. So we have minus 1 over 4x. If you bring this to the left side as well, that gives us 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2, which is going to be 3. 3y, take the constant, uh, keep the constant on the right side. This is the first equation. Okay. If you look at the second one, you have 1 over 2x plus or minus py equal to 9 over 2 minus 3 over 2, whatever that is. That's 6 over 2 or 3. That's what you have on the right side. Now, the constants do not matter. They have to be different. But the x and y terms, they have to be the same. Okay? The x and y terms, they have to be the same. Now, x terms, you already know. So you have to make them the same first before you can compare the y terms. Does that make sense? X and Y terms, both of, both of them have to be the same. So what we first have to do is we have to make these two terms the same. Now, how can we do that? So, uh, 
we want to make this one over two. One idea is to multiply that by minus two, the first equation. Minus two, so multiply karenge, to one over two ban jayegi. Or if you find that difficult to think of, what you can do is you can first make this equation x minus, so if you multiply this whole equation by two to get rid of the fraction, that will give you x minus 2py equal to six. Now, how can you make this x? You have to multiply by minus four. Minus four, so multiply for them. What do you get? X minus 12y equals whatever that is. I don't care about that. Now, these terms have to be the same. Okay? These terms have to be the same. So that gives us minus 2p equals minus 12. The value of p should be 6. And that's what we write here. If p is equal to 6, then the system has no solution. Is that all right? Okay, let's move on. So that was uh, the first one from this PDF, question number 2. The next one you've asked about is question number 11. Let's move to that. Okay. For each real number r, which of the following points lies on the graph of each equation in the xy plane for the given system? Okay, so these are two equations that are, that are given. We have these points given. We have to check which one of these points lies on each of these equations. Well, actually, if you notice, these two equations are the same, aren't they? If you multiply the first one by 3, you get 24x plus 21y equals 27. So essentially, they are the same equation. So you just need to input in one equation, okay? All of those points. Now, inputting them like this is going to be a bit complicated. It says for each real number r, that means r could be anything. So r pe koi restriction nahi hai. An easy way to do this is you say, let's suppose r is equal to zero. And that gives you the first point as zero, nine over seven. Just try that in that equation and see if that works. Similarly, for the second one, you would have nine over seven, zero. You can try that. Okay. Now let's try the first one and see what that gives us. X equal to zero. That gives us seven. So zero plus seven into nine over seven equals nine. And that satisfies, so it should be A already. If you want to be sure, you can check the other ones quickly as well. The second one, third one, fourth one. Uh, for the second one, you will have to input nine and 27 for the third one. For the fourth one, you have to input nine and 27 as well. Now these two obviously cannot be true because in that case, they're the same point, right? Which one of them would you select? So they, these are obviously wrong. You can just check the first two. And it turns out that A is correct. Okay. Make sense? So rather than inputting the point as it is, R and then minus 8R, 8R over 7 plus 9 over 7, it's, it becomes easier if you just input a number like this. And 0 is the easiest number to use because it eliminates some of the terms as well. Okay. All right. That was question number 11. Now the next one from this PDF is 13. Okay. One of the two equations in a linear system is 2x plus 6y equals 10. The system has no solution. Which of the following could be the other equation in the system? If you want no solution, what that means is the two equations have to be parallel, right? X and Y coefficients should be the same. Now, it could be some multiple of this equation as well. So this equation is the same as x plus 3y equals 5 or 3x plus 9y equals 15 right these are all the same equations all you need to check is that the coefficient of x and y they should be in the ratio 1 to 3 okay if x is 1 y should be 3 now see which one of these equations satisfies that condition. Okay. Uh, the system has no solution. It could be the first one. It could be the second one as well. Not these two. Now let me just check the other two. The system has no solution. Okay. Now in the first case, you have five on the right side. That becomes the same equation. And if that's the same equation, that's infinite solution. Right? That's no, that's not no solution. That would be infinite solutions because the same line. Ho 
So the first one is when you have infinite solutions because the constant to be same again. But, but we want the constant to be different. If the constant is also the same, then it would be infinite solution. The, in this case, the constant is different. So it's going to be B. Okay, A is infinite solution. Is that okay? All right, 13. And then the next one is 15. One of the equations in a system of two linear equations given is, again, the same type of problem. Which equation would be the second equation in the system? Again, uh, all of these equations are given in this form where you have constant on the right side, x and y terms to the left side. Let's bring this to that form as well. So it becomes minus 6x plus y equals 18. x and y terms should be in the same ratio, minus 6 to 1. And the constant should be different if you want no solution. Okay, so how do you think of this now? Minus 6, y, the first one is the same equation. So that's infinite solutions. That's not correct. Minus 6, this was uh, the same ratio, but different constants. It should be b as well. Okay? No problems? So exactly the same type of problem as 15. The next one is 16. Okay. So you can see a graph here. If a new graph of three linear equations is created, using the system of equations shown and the equation x plus 4y equals negative 16, how many solutions x, y will, will the result, resulting system of t equations have? Okay, so on the graph, you see two equations, right? You have two equations already on the graph. And then they're saying there's another equation that you also sketch here on the same graph. How many solutions will the resulting system have? Now, how do you figure that out? You can just plot this there, right? Or in fact, there's an easier way of doing this because if you have one point that satisfies all of those three equations, what that means is it has to satisfy these two equations and also satisfy this equation, right? Now there's only one point that satisfies these two equations at the same time. What's that point? That's this point. This is eight and two. Okay. Now, if this point also satisfies this equation, then we would say we have this one solution of those three equations. Solution kya hota kisi system of equations ka? It's the point that satisfies all equations, right? It's just this one point that satisfies those two equations. We can just check if this point also satisfies the third one. Let's input that there and see what we get from that. 8, 2, 8 plus 4 into 2, that equals minus 16. So it does not satisfy. So there's no point, therefore, that satisfies all three equations. So we can say the resulting system of, of, of equations has no solution. It's zero solution. All right, so this is the next one. Linear functions, uh, hard questions on linear functions. There are two questions that you've asked from this PDF, questions four and five. Okay. According to data provided by the US Department of Energy, what do they want at the end? The constant 2.74 and the function estimates which of the following. Okay, this is the function. Average price per gallon of regular gasoline from September to December is modeled by this function. Average price per gallon, gallon is X. No, that's not X. X represent, represents the number of months after September 1. X is time in months. And F is the average price per gallon. Okay. 2.74, what is this representing? The constant, no, it's not just the constant, by the way. 2.74 minus 0 0.19 into X minus 3. How do you understand 2.74? Achha. Let's look at the first one. The average monthly decrease in the price per gallon. Ye to gradient represent kar the general, right? The rate of change. So it cannot be A. Okay. Now let's just rearrange this equation a bit as well because this is not the only constant in this equation, by the way. 
if you were to rearrange this or simplify this, you get 2.74 minus 0.19x plus 0.57. So keep in mind, Point one nine is the gradient yes. Minus one point one, minus zero point one nine. That's the gradient yes. Acha. This is not the only constant, by the way. Keep in mind, this is also another constant that's being added there. So don't assume that it's the starting point or something. It's not the starting point. Okay. The difference in the average price per gallon from September one to December one. You say nilagra. The average price per gallon on September 1, the average price per gallon on December 1. Now, let's think about this. If we were to simplify this equation, uh, what does this give us? 2.74, and then you have 0.57 added to it, and then you have minus 0.19x. What is this number telling you? Minus, minus 0.19, every month, the price is decreasing by this much on average, okay? What's the starting price? Starting price is the sum of these two numbers. What's that? 2.74 plus 0.57. That is 3.31. That's the starting price. This is the starting price. When does time start here? On September 1. Time starts on September 1. Every month, the price is decreasing by 0.19. If you think about it, 0.57 is actually three times 0.19. So in three months, the price decreases by 0.57. So after three months, if you input x equal to three here, so one way to think about this could be, how can you get 2.74? You get 2.74 if you input x equal to three here. If you input x equal to three here, the result is 2.74. What does x equal to 3 represent? x equal to 3 represents 3 months after September 1. That's December 1. So this is the average price on December 1. That's D. Okay. 3.31 is representing the average price on September 1. 2.74 is representing the average price on December 1. So if you input x equals 3 there, that's the number that you get. Is that okay? Okay, that was four. And then the next one is five from this PDF. Oil and gas production in a certain area dropped from 4 million barrels in 2000 to 1.9 million barrels in 2013. 4 million to 1.9 million. Now the price decreased, the production decreased at a constant rate. Constant rate means it's a linear function. Okay. Which of the following linear functions best models the production T years after the year 2000? Okay, what's the starting value supposed to be? Four, all of them have four as the constant. Okay. Now, since the price is decreasing at a constant rate, what's the overall decrease? Can you find the overall decrease? 1.9 minus four, that's the overall change. That's 2.1 minus 2.1. That's the overall decrease in how many years? in 13 years so how much is the price how much is the production decrease in every year since it's a constant rate you just divide this by 13 so minus 2.1 over 13. now you don't have any decimals here so you can say, you can say this is the same thing as minus 21 over 130. okay and that is c is that okay Starting point suddenly same to four. So that was not something that we could differentiate on. Gradient is minus 21 over 130. 